Dr. Slinkard's name comes up in, in various uh, agricultural conferences or, or in the media, he's often called the father of lentils in Canada. And I think this is really an accurate title. Uh, lentil was not a crop grown in Canada really to any extent prior to Dr. Slinkard's arrival uh, from south of the 49th parallel. And we're, we're really happy that him and Marie uh, made that trip. I think it was Dr. Slinkard's vision and persistence that made lentil the success it has been in Western Canada. Imagine introducing a completely new crop to a region. I'm thinking these days maybe cow cockle or hascap are, are new crops that we talk about, but um, yeah, there would be skeptics with a new crop. And I, I, I can imagine maybe the first decade there might have been some successes, but maybe a lot of bumps in the road as well. And speaking of bumps in the road, I heard that Dr. Slinker drove his huge station wagon around the prairies quite a bit in those days, uh, crisscrossing uh, the province to, to chat with farmers, agronomists, and uh, everybody uh, who, who, would, who would come, come to have a listen to learn about growing, growing and marketing lentils as well as, as other pulse crops. <coughs> Uh, in addition to, to Dr. Slinkard's work as a plant breeder, he supervised and trained many grad students, as Carl mentioned, in a, also postdocs and technicians. And uh, I, I think there might be a, a few in, in the room today who, uh, who maybe have been supervised in some way by Dr. Slinkard, and maybe you could, uh, I'm one of them, but maybe there's a few others in the room. Yeah, okay, see, so there's a few. And, um, you know, just thinking, thinking about it, uh, I, I can't name all those 50, but here's a few that you, you may have heard of. You may have heard of uh, a person named Bert Vandenberg, uh, and, and Bert surely would have loved to be here tonight. Uh, he's, he's on sabbatical in Italy. Uh, but <clears throat> as you know, Bert leads a, a huge uh, lentil breeding program, maybe, maybe the largest in the world. Uh, another student uh, you may know of is Puran Gar, and uh, Puran is leading probably one of the biggest chickpea uh, breeding programs in the world at, at Ikrasad in India. Uh, I thought of Andy Andrahanadi, he's uh, uh, breeding canola here with uh, Viterra. Paul Drimnenki breeding flax. Uh, Fez Ahmed, uh, biology professor in Brandon University. Rennie Viancourt, biology professor at University of Tasmania. Uh, Venkata, who we know quite well, is uh, working with the Ministry of Agriculture here, and so many, many more. And I probably, uh, yeah, you can ask Dr. Slinkard, he probably knows all 50 of them off by heart. Um, anyway, I, in 1988, I began my PhD degree uh, in the Department of Crop Science and Plant Ecology here at the U of S. And because my project was uh, in, on lentil, uh, of course, Dr. Slinkard was a member of my advisory committee. Now, I didn't really interact with him on a day-to-day -day basis because my project was really mainly in the lab, but um, where I, I really um, appreciated Dr. Slinkard's help was when it came to writing my thesis. And um, Dr. Slinkard went through my thesis draft with a fine-tooth comb, uh, or really like a red ink pen, and there was a lot of red ink on that thing, like from top to bottom, every comma, period, semicolon, getting rid of unnecessary words and phrases. And really, as I think about it, it was my best ever lesson in, in scientific writing. Uh, and I, I really uh, thank Dr. Slinkard for that, and hopefully I can pass that on to some extent to, to uh, current students. Then about maybe a year after uh, uh, he, he got through my thesis, um, I certainly think Dr. Slinkard made another substantial contribution uh, for me uh, in my career. And I was, I was involved in a postdoc uh, program and had applied for a plant breeding job with Agriculture Canada. Um, my, my background's from the farm, and, uh, and my bachelor and master's were, were, were out in the field, so to speak, field agriculture. But the previous four years, I'd been in the lab and maybe getting a little bit out of the loop with uh, the latest nuances in in plant breeding. So one day I, I knocked on Dr. Slinkard's door. I, I'm pretty sure it was around 4 or 5 p.m. and I asked if I could make an appointment to, to chat with him a bit to, to get some tips uh, prior to my interview. <clears throat> he invited me to come in, said have a seat, and then we chatted for probably a couple hours. And uh, that was really appreciated and well in fact I got my first job as a plant breeder uh, coming out of that uh, conversation. So. Um, 
I returned to University of Saskatchewan in 1999, and, uh, and certainly Dr. Slinkard has encouraged me uh, in my role as a pulse crop breeder since then. Um, he's giving advice, encouragement, and in really in a nice way, not, uh, not to domineering or meddling or anything, but just in a very positive way. And um, I, I've, I've really appreciated that, Le letting us make some mistakes and give it a, give it a try. Um, also, over the years, he's provided me with many books, journal articles, uh, uh, even some uh, um, interesting artifacts from his, uh, from his office that are now in my office, different kind of uh, PE-related uh, paintings or pictures or things. Uh, and even as recently as, I think, two weeks ago, I got an article from Dr. Slinkert about powdery mildew. He emailed it over to me that uh, he thought this could be useful for me, and indeed it, it is. So. Um, maybe to summarize, uh, thank you, Dr. Slinkard, for your contributions to the pulse crop industry of Canada and the world, to healthy crops and healthy foods. Thank you for your many contributions as an advisor and mentor to me and many students and technicians, as well as to many farmers and agronomists. And so uh, all the best to you and Marie in your new home, which I just saw today for the first time. Uh, yeah, please stay in touch with us. Uh, uh, in, in the future, and uh, congratulations on this well-deserved award from uh, Food Day Canada.